The gospel reading this morning is uh, from Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 12. If you would all please stand. Ask, search, knock, and the golden rule. Ask and it will be given you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for bread, would give him a stone? Or if the child asks for a fish, will you give a snake? If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? In everything, do to others as you would have them do to you, for this is the law and the prophets. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks. Be to God. Seated. I thought that uh, even though the main topic of uh, this service is Tithing Sunday, well, we should not let Father's Day pass without just some reflection upon it. And I found that scripture to be a rather interesting scripture. Because in most of the versions that you read, Jesus is referring to the Father. And he says, look, which of you fathers, if your son asked, him, asked you for a fish, would give him a serpent? And the obvious answer is, none of us would. Because we know better than that. And then, and then he said, and if he asked for a bread, would you give him a rock? And they would say, no, none of us would, because we know better than that. And I think in that, Jesus honors fathers, all parents, but fathers in particular, saying that um, we may not get everything right. I mean, he calls us evil, but next to Jesus, there's nobody really good. <clears throat> so I can take that to understand understand we may not get everything right. For instance, the Father's Day rule that I heard the other night I think is a good one. When they play my favorite song on the radio and I sing along, the words that I sing are the words of the song. <laughs> it's not my fault if the Beatles get them wrong or whatever. <laughs> so I may mess up in some things, but we know, we know what it is to give good things and that's what we want to do and not only does does Jesus honor that but he says and now just think on from there from what your father does and you can get close to understanding what God wants to do in our lives so I was looking up some things that people have written about fathers and I found some place where it said, a father is a man who expects his son or daughter to be the person that he meant to be. In other words, what fathers want is what God wants for us all, and that is that each and every one of us grows up to be the person we want to be. Another one said, um, a father is somebody who has uh, photos in his wallet where his money used to be. <laughs> God invests in us. Fathers invest in their children. Jim Valvano, remember Jim? Jimmy V? He said, my father gave me the greatest gift anyone could give another person. He believed in me. Amen? You read things that people write about their fathers and again and again and again, what they tell you is he was there for me. He was there for me. He was there for me. Maybe sometimes he gave you good advice, like don't pick on your little sister. Maybe sometimes he gave you a wise word to grow on, like my father gave me. Always wipe your feet. Never talk with your mouth full. <laughs> and then he told us, just keep eating, just keep eating. <laughs> but your father was there for you, believed in you, stood by you. So we know from that what God is for us. Amen? What well, God is for us, the one who is always there, the one who wants the best for us, the one who expects us to grow up to be the one that we are meant to be, even Jesus, his beloved son. 
given to us as a gift. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for fathers. We thank you for what they mean in our lives and what they will always mean in our lives. And we thank you, Lord, that you represent yourself to us as father, as the parent who wants to give us that which is best, as the parent who wants to see us grow to all that we are meant to be, as the parent who wants to teach us how to get along. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. I believe there is a special chorus for this day. The scripture reading this morning comes from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians, and it is uh, chapter 2, verses 4 through 10 and 19 to 22. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Jesus Christ, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us, in Jesus Christ. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what we, he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In whom you are also built to be the holy dwelling place of God. Let's talk about uh, tithing for a minute. But first, I forgot to mention something before. Uh, fathers, dads, men that are here, um, we are inviting you to breakfast. Not today, it's too late for breakfast today. But next Saturday, there's a breakfast for men, all the men. And we have found one of the best chefs in the church, Evan, somebody, who is going to prepare that breakfast and want to just share it with you all. Eight o'clock here in the social hall. So y'all come. We have good things to talk about and good food to eat. Um, by the action of uh, the stewardship committee, that's Chris Maynard mostly, and the uh, finance committee, this is Tithing Sunday. Amen? And we try to advertise that and put that word out there. I know it didn't get to everybody. And some people came to church and said, Whoa, I didn't know it was tithing Sunday. I didn't bring all my money with me. That's okay. We can deal with that. But I need to tell you something. And that is by the word of God, every Sunday is tithing Sunday. All right? Every Sunday is tithing Sunday. And I want to just talk a little bit about uh, tithing and how that fits into our life in the church, as I think Ephesians wants to point out to us. Now, tithing is an ancient thing. People have been tithing for a long time. It's like it got invented with history. That a tenth would go to uphold the religious life of the people that were gathered in that place. And so in the 26th chapter of Deuteronomy, um, God makes it plain that God expects that tenth to be rendered unto God through God's gathered people, the temple at that time, the church in this time, in order to not only sustain its life, but to share its life with all. After all, God makes it absolutely plain that he made everything. It all belongs to him. 
You know, we went kayaking down the, the Patuxent River last week, and every one of us, except for Karen Weiss that went down there, broke a law, because you're supposed to pay somebody permission to go down that river. And I guess I should have gone and gotten my permit. As an old guy, I would get it free, so I didn't have anything to complain about. It just seemed unreasonable to me that God made the river, and we were going to float on it as one of God's creation, just like the leaves float on it, and we should, never mind. But God owns, <laughs> just had to get out of my chest. God owns it. God owns it all. And so God said, it all belongs to me. But I tell you what, you don't have to give it all back. Just give me one-tenth. So I was looking at this field. Isn't this a gorgeous field out here that Mr. What's-His-Name has? Ah, that is a beautiful field. And before, and when it's harvest, Mr. What's-His-Name, take the first tenth of it. Not the last tenth, not the worst tenth, not the tenth that didn't quite measure up to the rest, but the first and the best tenth of that and give it to the Lord. That was God's commandment. Look it up. Deuteronomy 26, 1 to 4 or 5 or 6. And it's all laid out there. Anything less than that, God says, dishonors me. Anything less than that is not an honorable gift to the God who created the universe and made every last one of us that's here. Well, the people did that for a while, maybe a week and a half. <laughs> and they struggled with that, as they struggled with a lot of things like we do with what God calls us to do. But they got called back to doing that again and again. Real quickly, if you read the book of Malachi, it's easy to find. It's the last book of the Old Testament, right? Malachi. Malachi, traditional prophet, just fire in his eyes. And you know what he's upset about? He's calling the priests cheaters. Calling the priests people that despise the Lord. You know why? Because they're not rendering the full tithe to God. And he says, how can you say that you come in here to worship the Lord, sing your songs, even give them a nice hand clap, and don't bring in your tithe? You are cheating God. And some of you, when you bring your tithe, he says, furthermore, you bring me your leftovers. You bring a blind animal to be sacrificed, he says. You bring me your lame, your sicklings, the one you don't want anyway. I don't want them, God says. I want your best, and I want a tithe of it. Anything less than that is to sneeze at God. Now, my words, the prophet. I think he said sniff, but I think it can be translated sneeze. God is no one to be sneezed at, he says. And until you start bringing me to tithe, don't look for God's blessing. That's the way prophets talked. But here's what he said. God wants to work with you. God wants to come as a purifying fire. God wants to come and purify our hearts so that we can give perfect gifts to God. That is, that the gifts we give to God would not be a financial arrangement with the church, but would be a heart arrangement with God. And the only heart arrangement that God is really pleased with, the prophet said, is a tenth. One dollar out of every ten is what God is looking for, is what God expects. Not because... It's a kind of a ratio that rings through the universe with some meaning. But for God, that shows that our heart is in this work. Now, real quickly with what Ephesians says, because Jesus ups the ante in this, as you know. Can you say up the ante with Methodists? I don't know. Because what Jesus talks about is giving everything. You remember the rich young man that came to him and says, I want to be a part of the deal. What do I have to give? And Jesus says, give it all. Zacchaeus, he lets him get away with only half, only 50%. But then he goes back to the temple and finds the widow that's giving her all. He says, that's it. That's it. That's what we want. And so by the time we get to St. Paul's writings in the book of Ephesians, a wonderful thing is happening. And it's a gift exchange. Let this box represent the gifts that God would give us. I do not have time to do this, and I'm really sorry, but I'm going to do it a little bit so you get the idea, okay? God is a storehouse of endless gifts to us. Look, they're all over the place. Big gifts, little gifts, gifts that 
and he just and he just wants to share them with everybody. Art, have a gift from the Lord. It's the gift of life that God gives us. Have a gift from the Lord. It's the gift of the Holy Spirit which God gives us. It's a small gift, but guess what? It means everything. It's a gift of love that God gives us. And so it is that God has a gift that God gives to each and every person. And the gifts just get better and better. St. Paul says there's a gift that goes to everybody. And guess what they're for? They're for the building up of the church. To some, he gives the gift of apostleship. Congratulations. To others, he gives... <laughs> We need apostles. To others, he gives the gift of teaching. To others, he gives the gift of being pastors. They're in the box. We're running out of time. Oh, my goodness. And he gives all these gifts. See, the gift of pastoring, the gift of um, producing miracles, oh, the gift of healing, the gift of preaching, the gift of evangelizing. All these gifts, they are not gifts that you use to make a bank. They're not gifts that you use to build a construction business. What kind of gifts are they? There's gifts that you give to build up the church. God said... St. Paul says in Ephesians, the greatest gift that God gave us is Christ. And the gift that Christ gives us is new life. He says he brings us back from the dead in our sins and our lapses and gives us a new life. And he forms us together in a new people. And he calls the church the new creation that God has made. He calls the church the the assembly of the saints of God. We do not think of ourselves in exalted enough terms. If we did, we would give more abundantly to the work of the church. Each of those gifts that goes out, and I don't have time to tell you the parables that this comes from, but God always expects a return on his gift. And he says, I'll put you in the church, but not as inhabitants of that building, but as those who are there to build it up. And I'll give you what you need to do that. But you got to give it up in order for all that goodness that God gives us to come together and to find its place in the building up of the church. And that is what tithing means. When, when it is that we heartfelt understand all that God has given us, when we understand the tremendous work that God wants the church to do to unite this world together in love. Do we have a job to do? To unite this world together in love. So there are no outsiders. There's only us gathered together. Because as soon as somebody's outside, you know what happens. You say things about them that you don't understand. Whoops, we don't have time to get into that. That's not where we want to go. We want to build a people that will pull the world together in love. And God says, I've given you all you need to do that. What you need to do is put it all together in one place and to make it happen among you. And so it's Tithing Sunday. And we'll make a, make a stab at that today. We, if you want to do it this way, we will tithe. We'll take what it is that we will earn this week and we'll give a tenth of that to the church. Unless it's a bad week for you, then give 20%. It has occurred to me that I generally tip my waiter 20% and I give 10% to God. What does that say? So anyway, you take what you got, give a tenth of that to the church. Now maybe you are prepared to do that today in terms of your gift. Maybe that's something that you and God got to get your head and heart together on and figure that out. What that tenth of income, that tenth of time, that tenth of treasure, that tenth of witness is going to look like Maybe you can present that gift today, or maybe you need to take that envelope home and put it where you put your Bible. You know where your Bible is? Put it there, and you and God get together and decide what that's going to be so that you are a part of the new creation. You are a part of building up that body of believers that would unite the world in love. In a moment, we'll stand, and we're going to sing this really neat little song. Lord, you have come to the lakeshore because God calls us to do this. Um, and during that time, I invite you, if you're ready to make your gift today, to come and to put it in the box, to mingle it with the gifts that God gives us.
and to let it be there is a sign of your heartfelt participation, your heartfelt combination of the combining of our lives with the life of Christ in this community of faith. I invite you also when you come to maybe take the opportunity to kneel at the altar and say once again, Lord, I, I accept the gift that you give me. I accept the gift of life. I accept the gift of the forgiveness of my sins. I accept the gift of uh, the invitation to be one of the saints of God. And I kneel here before you just to say that. And I want to ask you to help me to live that out. Maybe you can take the opportunity at the altar for that.